Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel in case you're new here. Hi, my name is Abwasha and welcome to the Slay Squad. Hey guys, it feels like it's been forever. As you can hear, my voice sounds a bit nasally because I came down with a cold and if I wait for it to go back to normal, we might never have a YouTube video. So hopefully it's not too annoying. This week's how-to video is going to be how to save and budget in your 20s. <laughs> This is me just realizing that this year I'm on the wrong side of 25. And this again is me realizing that some of you guys have been here for five years, like since I was 20. I mean, if you have, leave a comment down below because you're a real one, you're a real OG. So when it comes to saving, I think I'm pretty good at it, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty good at saving, my dad is a banker, so ever since we were young, um, we were introduced into saving, like at a really young age, and I can vividly remember when I opened my first bank account, I think I was like in class two, or class three around there, it was a savings account, and he took us for like the activation, it was somewhere on Ngong Road, probably like Ngong Rescos or something, and it was, it was literally, like, one thing about Maxine, since I was young, <laughs> you were so I remember Nameless was performing on that day, and I went and I took a picture with him, I have no idea where the picture went, and then we were given like cute piggy banks, actually, let me look if I can find it. <laughs> We are giving um, the performance after dancing, we are given the t-shirts and we are given piggy banks as you can see this was <laughs> how my piggy bank looked like and my brother had an orange one and I think since my dad was there he was also given a different color one and I used to save, like I can remember uh, my dad used to teach me that anytime, you know, like when your grandma comes, gives you money, your auntie comes, gives you money, you save half of it and then the half of it you can use. I mean, then it wasn't much, you were given like a 10 bob, so then you'd buy sweets for like 5 bob and then the other 5 bob you put. So I've been raised to, you know, know how to put away money for a different day. And every time I used to ask my dad, where am I saving, where am I saving? And he used to be like, you know, when one day you want to buy something really, really big, that's when you can go back and use the money from in here. And I think that was really nice of him <laughs> to teach me that from a young age. So yeah, that's basically my personal relationship with saving. And for this video, of course, I'm not really a professional. It is just a how-to video in case you don't know where to start from and I hope that it helps. So let's get straight to the video. start with very layman descriptions uh, budgeting is basically creating a plan for how you'll spend your money and saving is putting some money aside for a rainy day so if you are stuck on where to start you can basically use the 50 30 20 rule which basically means that you use 50% of your income on essentials that stuff like rent food, um, transport, and then 30 is on once. So that's like getting your nails did, buying a new handbag, your vacation, you know, everything material girl <laughs> falls under the 30%. And then we have 20 that goes into your savings. So if you don't know where to start, that is a good way to like divide your income. So I think we're going to start with the 80%, which is the um, essentials and ones, which is basically what you want to budget. Okay, so for today I have my notes on my phone and like I mentioned before this I was already into saving and budgeting but then when I'm coming to do such a video I always do a bit more research just so that I'm giving you guys accurate information and so I had to go to my most trusted uh, platform I have to give credit where credit is due so I went to Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about them a couple of times before. So the class that I took for this is called uh, hmm, 
very big. Budgeting made easy in 16 minutes. One thing I love about it is that the class is 16 minutes and I literally took it um, while I was at the salon under the dryer and I was finished with my class before even the dryer was done and so I love it. The class is by Brainy Money and I will have it linked down below in the description box. So one thing that I love about this is that he gives you an already made spreadsheet like a pre-made spreadsheet so that all you have to do is go in and maybe customize the categories if you'd like and just input your numbers so it makes it extra it's like literally cheat code <laughs> cheat code 101 and i love that so in the class he talks about um how to calculate your net worth creating a the expense budget creating the income budget then you input actual transactions and at the end there is uh, like a chart that comes in and analyzes everything for you which i found pretty pretty cool so i was doing all these things for the most part apart from one and that is um where we did the calculation of my net worth and i've never thought about doing it and now that i've done it i'm like gosh it's really important because it's like on one view you can see how much money you actually really have because sometimes you're like ah, i'm okay you know <laughs> i have everything but when you think about it you really don't because what we did we did like the assets and the liabilities so you put down everything that you own you know your house your car your land that you own and then on the other side you put liabilities if you're paying you know mortgage if you're still paying for your car loan and it does the deductions that you can see how much you really have you know and i find found that really really important so i would say that when it comes to budgeting the first step you need to do is do the um, calculation of your net worth this class by Brainy Money, by the way, is on Skillshare Premium, but worry not because the link that is down below in the description bar will give the first 1,000 people a free trial to Skillshare Premium for one month. So yeah, don't forget to head down and check below in the description bar. I will have linked everything that I'm talking about in today's video. So after you've calculated your net worth, the next step is tracking your expenses. And this is really important because how else will you know what you regularly spend your money on? And for this, I use a Moneyfy. Money Manify is an app you can find it on the play store you can find it on the app store and the best thing about it is that it is on your phone and for me this is really essential because when I'm paying for something I'm probably paying for it on M-Pesa and even if I'm doing it on card I probably also have my phone so immediately I spend anything I just go ahead and put the data and I am so strict with this like you guys smoky like smoky 20 shillings I go and put another category of food smoky 20 shillings so that i can account for each and every shilling and it's also really easy because all you have to do is go in put in your income and then your expenses and a budget so the first thing you're doing this you'll just be putting a rough figure you know for example maybe you put eating out 5,000 shillings and you will be very shocked that by the end of it things that you think you use such little money on you will find <laughs> that you're probably you know calling jumia food calling over it's a bit too many times so yeah i would definitely recommend um tracking the expenses first and you need to track them for a while so i'd give it about let's say three months of you being you know disciplined and putting in every single thing that you make on the app I've just realized that there's some sweeping in the background. Um, I think the neighbors are doing some cleaning on the veranda. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if the mic can pick it up, but I'm sorry if it is. Um, so once you have tracked your expenses for about a period of about three months, then you'll see a pattern. You will see like if I'm, I'm doing badly when it comes to eating out, this is the extreme. And if I've not eaten out too much, this is, you know, the lower side of everything this this part where you're creating your where you're basically tracking your budget that's like 90 percent of the work because that's also what the teacher on skillshare said we're just creating and putting your income versus your expenses that's 90 percent of the work the rest of the work sort of does itself as long as you're disciplined in tracking because the data will not lie you will know what you usually spend so after like the period of three months is when i would recommend now going back sitting down being very honest with yourself and now putting in the figures there is no way 
you've seen the least amount of money you've spent on eating out is 7,000 and then you're going to budget for yourself 3,000. That is lying to yourself <laughs> because it's not going to work. So leave enough room for you to be comfortable because you know in this life you also need to have a bit of enjoyment now. <laughs> so do um, a realistic budget in short is what I'm trying to say. So you sit down, put in all your expenses nicely and yeah that's basically the beginning of it and if you don't want to do it on your phone for one reason or another the teacher on skillshare the spreadsheet he gives allows you to do it month by month as well so at the end of the day you can be sitting down on your laptop and then you pull out your receipts you pull out your mpesa messages and you just input it in there it can also work because i know some people prefer to do all their um, budgeting work on their laptop and have the excel sheets stored up so yeah Good idea so that is it when it comes to budgeting there's not really much to say about it it's just you to be very very disciplined when it comes to tracking your finances and then once you have a fixed budget you also need to be very disciplined and don't surpass the limit if you surpass the limit on one area make sure you did that in another area just so that you know it keeps everything balanced so now we can go to the 20% which is the savings I think now it's 2022 we all know that we are not saving in the bank and if you've been hearing people saying oh we're not saving in the bank we're not saving in the bank and you don't know the reason why the reason is basically inflation and um, the easiest way I can put it is that let's say just as an example today a loaf of bread is a hundred shillings you you've been saving that a hundred shillings in the bank since today then you wake up at the end of the year a loaf of bread is 120 Kenyan shillings and you, you still have your 100 bob in the bank. You say that 100 bob, yes, you saved it for the entire year but by the end of the year you can't even buy the same loaf of bread. So if you leave your money in the bank, it's basically just dying. <laughs> like it's reducing in value each and every day that you have left it there. So the smart thing would be to make your money work for you uh, by investing it somewhere. You can invest in the money market, you can invest in bills, you can invest in bonds, basically anything that will make your money appreciate instead of depreciate in value. I did a whole series on the money market I think in 2020. What year are we in? Oh, we're in 2022. Dang. Maybe it was 2021. I can't remember. But I did a whole series and I had to call a bunch of different um, organizations to find out, you know, their interest rates and stuff. And I posted it on my stories. Unfortunately, I forgot and I didn't save it on my highlights. And up until today, people still DM me to um, give them information on that. But I don't remember because once I settled on the one that I wanted, <laughs> I basically forgot about all the rest but i have found a youtube uh, video by mima consultancy i will link it down below she's also done a bunch of research on a few money markets but what i'd also advise is that you do your own research just google money markets in kenya find out the interest rates find out how easy it is to remove your money um Basically, yeah, do a lot of research before settling on what you want. Um, if you want to get into the bills and bonds, what you need is a CDS account. I will also link a video in the description box that will teach you um, everything you know about everything you need to know about opening a CDS account. And then um, when you hear like a few weeks ago there was an infrastructure bond that was a really really good one infrastructure bonds are nice because they are not taxed and so if you caught on to that before it was closed then good for you mom because that that was a good investment opportunity what i'm basically saying is don't save your money in the bank because it will depreciate in value look for a way to save it in a place that has the value increasing. Another thing that is really essential to have is an emergency fund. Um, and why is an emergency fund essential? As you guys saw, COVID came, a lot of people lost their jobs and people didn't have jobs for, you know, month after month after month. If you have an emergency fund, then you can use that money before you even start digging into your savings. You can also decide to quit your job because you know Gen Z's, the way they move, <laughs> kidogo stress at work and they're like, I'm out. I'm out. See you later. <laughs> so you have your emergency fund to cushion you. Something can even happen. Um, you bust a tire. This is something that you had not planned for. It's this exactly that is the word or the description that I was looking for. It's money that you 
dig into when something unexpected happens you know before you even get into your savings you can also choose to put your emergency fund in the money market that way it's also increasing in value you know we've refused to put our money anywhere where it's just sitting <laughs> similar to putting it under the mattress we're not doing that anymore just make sure that you can be able to easily withdraw the money you know in a short amount of time because the purpose of an emergency fund is so that you can be able to get the money out quickly so make sure wherever you're putting it you can be able to get the money out in case of an emergency and in your money market <laughs> sorry in your emergency fund you want to make sure that you have six months of income that is it for today's video short and sweet but packed with information i love doing such videos because in the comment section someone always comments like a tip for me that i can use and i love it like i love learning from you guys as well and i hope that um you've come out of this video with something and you've gotten some value so thank you so much for watching always remember to work hard and have good intentions until next time bye guys